One. Rolls will be reversed this time though with 369 on the Jace. And the reason you always get that Wukong uh, very often into this matchup is his extra armor and regeneration from his passive that you try and stack up and then look for your all in opportunity on the Jace to try and get the kill. And that's gonna require jungle attention. Well, I will say though, Wukong getting to stack armor via his passive and probably early Ninja Tabby as well. He's got a set jungle who's primarily physical as well. So it's similar damage typing. typing. You've got an armor stacking top laner just natively. That's going to look pretty good for Bin overall. Now he's got to step up against 369. That is going to be a tough matchup. If you're going player by player, you're really going to <laughs> ES favored almost down the line. But if you step up on the day and you do, it, so, do what needs to be done, then you're great. And I do want to interject on this because okay. in the semifinal, Finals, this was such a catastrophic matchup for Suning because of the emphasis that Top put onto 369. They get him counterpick. It was the Jackson to Mordekaiser, devastating counterpick. Quinn into Renekton, devastating counterpick in the favor of 369. Plus, they sent Karsa to gank his lane early for him, getting him first kills in both of those games. So it's jungle attention resources. It is draft pick resources. So much that uh, Top Esports tried to funnel into 369 to get that winning top side. They funnel 369 in the early game. They funnel 369 in the late game. He is a player they absolutely play through. Uh, top Esports' Herald control is like 1.27 a game. They get most heralds, they play around topside. They sat dragons for it, by the way. They have a very low first dragon percent. They have less than one dragon at 15 minutes on average. They are playing around topside in the early game, and you've got this Jace Wukong volatile matchup. We'll see how much Karsa can be up there. But on the other side, what's going to happen for Suning? Around the bottom side, we saw how well Huan Feng played in the quarterfinal. His Jin from inside the base. Yeah, the champ got stolen away. He's still outstanding. Their dragon control is excellent. Suning playing around the bottom side, most likely. We'll see how it shapes up, though, because you've got a volatile matchup top side regardless, and we get to figure out which team can play around it better. Yeah, and we should start off this game by painting the entire picture from those semifinals because while there was, you know, counterpick top side, lots of ganks up uh, early onto the top side, which resulted in a big CS lead for 369, there also was a big CS lead for Jackie Love and Yuyanja in that series. And it was mostly self earned in uh, various matchups for them into Hongfeng and Sword Art. And that's one of the components that people are expecting to change because at Worlds, Wangfeng and Sword Art have really stepped it up. This has to be one of the differences for Suning to make sure they don't get a similar result as they did in the LPL. A lot of phase rush on one side, a lot of conqueror on the other. Suning hoping to do just that in this matchup, of course. Already one upset win with the quarterfinals going on. SOFM, I like this. Trying to play around the Debbie as much as possible. Timing looked a little bit off, but there we go. Gets it going. He's going to be just fine overall. And Leashless blue on one side, leashless red on the other. So both jungles are taking a path that will get them in a top lane around three minutes, 10 seconds. Level three, double buffs, ready to go, ready to rumble to turn that matchup around. 369, unfortunately, missing 100% of all CS so far in the lane. <laughs> yeah, uh, unlucky look right here so far for 369, especially with the Jace, because uh, for ah! Jace, ooh, uh, another one bites the dust here. For Jace, though, especially with uh, with hitting the CS, you also need to try and find that harassment early onto the Wukong. Uh, pushing up the CS there, you get access to the brush advantage. Then you can get off your Qs, get off your auto attacks on the Wukong, drop into the brush to drop the aggro from those minions. So you can drop off some of that extra damage back and try and whittle down that Wukong early on to open it up as an area for your jungle to try and take advantage of. And you mentioned the starts, Freak. Both junglers here on playmaking jungle champions for the early game. Both of them starting their routes on the bottom side, clearing up towards top. And you can see there's already a defensive ward here from 369 in the jungle to see if SOFM tries to make his way there. Only we'll to see if the matchup does come out to being much right now. Bottom is being pushed in on the top esports side. Not going to do anything because no junglers are around. So it's just the chance of denying farm underneath the turret. Very heavy clear for SOFM. Going to leave everything but the Krugs most likely. Or clear everything but the Krugs, I should say. Karsa making his first Ooh. foray forward. Sweeper online did not get a ward as his CS is still 16, but has taken his entire left side jungle, left up his own chickens. That's what I'm doing, more of a full clear. And this is kind of par for the course for these two players. Karsa plays more around his teammates, plays more for vision control. 
And SOFM is, is a very efficient clear who has really, really high gold difference for junglers at Worlds. Yeah, and the, that was the same in the semifinals as well. You know, there was a 30 CS lead at one point for SOFM. He also even got a solo kill on the 369, but Karsa did so much more for his lanes, actually getting those ganks off. And he is on the set. Set definitely relies on that playmaking. So we're looking at Pantheon lane. You can definitely try and play off there. Point and click into the set engage provides so much playmaking. And yeah. when you add a Jin on top of that, even with a flash, it's easy to try and take down that kill because you get your W root from your Jin after the flash and you're able to secure it. One Wang Feng, of course, does have cleanse, so he's aware of the possibilities of the CC stacking bottom lane that is looking for kill pressure. Yeah, nice deep ward comes down from Sword Art, spots the middle brush, which can track some of the lane ganking moves, and sweepers are down. Nice knockup right there. For now, it's a two on two. Back they go. Good damage. Jackie Love going to more or less lose that trade, but he's got regen. He went for the boots, multiple potions situation. He can step away from some of the CC. Obviously, plenty of regen. Not a problem down there. Great deep ward by Uyun Jia. Make sure they know the SOFM is back down on the side. They knew he took all six camps, then, go, then went back for the second respawn. And speaking of potions, uh, you got to keep track of the Wukong potions. As we were talking about, the Jace trying to constantly whittle down this Wukong, deny him CS under the turret. Um, he had to burn the potion really early on, does have biscuits, so he's got the arrival there, and he's trying to sustain under the tower. Uh, but this is a matchup where Wukong just tries to scavenge CS and, and try and save life until you get to your level 6 point. That's why the Wukong is picked into Jace. You whittle him down there with your passive armor and, and regeneration. But yep. then Wukong at level six with Conqueror, you have tremendous all-in kill pressure on the Jace. And this is where 369 taking a very intelligent recall right now uh, to go back because that's where jungle pressure starts to look towards the top side from the Wukong player. SLFM's just been power clearing, head down this entire beginning, uh, waiting for him to get level six to have that possibility. Yeah. Well, you talk about Ben trying to weather the storm. First recalls come off, four CS difference, and he's four seconds later on the recall. Basically splits the lane equally. What yes. storm, freak? It's what? just a cool breeze. It's a cool breeze right now, and that's the thing. It's it's only a cool breeze so far with 369, and, and that means, honestly, so far, so good. Doing better than last time they met. And I want to now see, as time ticks forward, we are two minutes till the Rift Herald spawns. The Drake is already alive. Right now, at the TES, having pressure on the bot side, it's usually pretty easy toward up the Drake and kind of guarantee that nothing is denied away and, and you know, there's no sneak for SOFM. But uh, if you go based on trajectory and history, at some point, Suning's gonna grab this first Drake and Top Esports gonna go ahead and grab that first Herald. Well, already looking for some vision here. You see the pings into the river for Karsa, looking to try and uh, preempt that play from Suning. He has been keeping up in farm with the Lee Sin as well for a set, which is very good numbers since uh, SOFM has been power farming away on the Lee Sin. He will get the crab, uh, but Karsa sneaks around to get that deep ward, and Jace does have teleport. Yeah, good pick up there, manages to grab the scuttle right in time. Karsa gonna walk in and start fighting the Drake anyway, and even though his presence may be known, the timing is too awkward for Suning. They had to push in the wave and recall. I love this play for Top Esports. They shoved in bot lane. Once their bot lane's back in lane, they go for the play on Drake, knowing that they have control, and Suning must match the recall. Big play in the top side. Ben forces the flash away from 369. But hey, that's okay. You can go ahead and get my ult out. No big deal. We got Drake here on TS side. And it's actually even better than okay for the Wukong side to, to get those uh, flashes traded because your cooldown for your ultimate comes up much quicker and you can repeat force the threat of those kills. Dragon, though, going over to TS, as you mentioned. Uh, good uh, advantage there for, uh, because of the backing of the bottom lane. And uh, we'll see if they can actually make something with the extra global here. Pantheon about to hit level six for Yanja. Uh, he was one of the players on TS that was taken advantage of most heavily in their series versus Fnatic. And this was an area that people were trying to think, oh, maybe Sooning will be able to repeat that success that Fnatic have. You know, maybe there was some falling off there from the side of TS. But this game is actually going much more similar to their semifinal series than it is to the series versus Fnatic, where Jackie Love and Yanja, they're just hard pushing, extra pressure here with this CC heavy lane and earning the CS lead for themselves. 
This is definitely really, really well done overall. The blind pick Jin came out, answered by Ezreal, no problem. Support pick, I believe. They got to see the Panth they got to grab the Pantheon once they saw Rakan, so support counter pick does manage to shape the lane quite a bit, and it means that it's an easy bot lane advantage overall. Plates taken, gank top side, easy ward hop kick. Q's gonna land, absolutely no way out, but he's gonna run for his life. The clone forwards, Ben needs another jump. The claw comes down, first blood to Suning. That's the extendo smack right there. Wukong got the extra range on his Q, and Bin finds the kill. That's why you trade your flashes in the matchup, Freak. Uh, jungle intervention here. SOFM actually changes the way that the series will go. Gets the first look on topside. Bin, though, he's got no flash as well. Flash ult into the clone, does not find the stun. Karsa guesses wrong, but the chase stun's gonna be easy. They got the move speed, they got the red buff. They're gonna get the counter kill, and Karsa makes sure he hands it over. 369 back on top. Sword Art over dives. Ulti's gonna miss, and Wanfeng is in the wrong side oh. of this one. A double kill for Jackie Love. We're gonna have to take a look at why they went for that dive, Freak, because both junglers on top side, it's a sooning disaster. Jackie Love picking up both of the kills on that counter bottom side. What a big turn of events. Yeah, I mean, Holy. this is massive. Jackie Love is ahead and he's gonna do good things. Let's watch this. All right, so uh, as we mentioned, the Pantheon level six, they try and go for the kill on the Jackie Love for the tower dive because Pantheon's ne not there, but the global can be used back to your own lane, freak. Yep. <laughs> it's a level six Pantheon. Yeah, it comes right back and he's there in time for the stun. Nice job holding onto the heal there too for Jackie Love. Yep. And good evasive maneuvers. He baits them right in uh, and he's able to uh, find the extra uh, kill there with the ultimate shot. Yeah, he survives the entire gank, just 1v2 with his ulti alive. And then Pantheon helps guarantee that the Ezreal drops, but yeah, that dive just failed by itself. I mean, Sword Art was dead before Yuan Jiao was even in that fight. So, you know, rough stuff here for Su Ning, but that is a, you know, it's a pretty bad look so far in game one. Every mutual objective so far has gone TES's way. Drake and the Herald will see where it crashes, where they're gonna earn their gold, but so far so good. I'm interested to see how this affects the rest of the series too, and, and the champion select, because very clearly, as we talked about in the beginning of Champ Select, you know, taking away specific champions from the comfort, from the success that we've seen recently. Uh, here's another engage on top side, though. Ben gonna find that knockup. It's gonna be the flash kick and a Q easy pickup. SOFM grabs kill number two. So top side, ironically, somewhat gonna be the point of strength for Su Ning. Bot lane, though, still just running away with it on TES's side. I mean, SOFM topside definitely showing that they learned from the previous series. Here we go, sweep in. Not quite in turret range. Shotgun's gonna clear the wave, though. Angel gonna take some damage. Knight trades back, and now into the bot side again. An easy kill as they make sure Karza shows up, and they're gonna summon the Herald, no problem. The full bot turret will die for this play. Jackie Love saying, you guys are not the fanatic bottom lane, and they go deep here. Karsa coming from the gank, also bringing the Rift Herald. That's gonna be a full turret. This is ideal situation for Rift Herald usage. They get the kills, they're gonna get the first turret bonus, they oh. get all of the turret plates. All right, not gonna be too much there. He's fine, I'm gonna walk away, no big deal. Jackie Love, now that he's 3-0, I gotta start gushing about how good Jackie Love is. If, if <laughs> You're holding it in until now? <laughs> it, I mean, I haven't gotten to cast a lot of Jackie Love VO5s, and now I get to. So Jackie Love may well be the single best AD carry in the world. There's contention that's maybe Ruler, but, you know, he's number one or number two. And this is a man, by the way, who gets usually no help at all. He is 19th in the LPL for CS share post-15. They do not put resources in him. And yet, he has the highest damage per minute of all 80 carries in the LPL. He does everything with nothing. This game, he's got three kills in first turret. He's gonna do everything with all the gold and he's gonna 1v9 this game. Yep, they try and dive him. They mess up the dive. Jackie Love punishes. Then Karsa goes down bottom to really make them regret their decisions. That's gonna be Dragon stacking for uh, TS as well. So if you look at the overall setups here with the strategy coming in from, from uh, TS, this is exactly what they want because they're the ones with incredible playmaking potential on AD carry support and jungle. You start to get these towers down early, then you get the possibilities of Pantheon ultimates coming in and the long range follow up of Jin W snares picking people off. Here's another look at the dive. Uh, 
Karsa, Hex Flash right on over the wall. They run straight at Sword Art and Wong Plug. Even with the Arcane Shift, nice slow down there with the Snipe. Overload of crowd control. They've got plenty of extra usages here, locking him up very easily. Beautiful stuff right now. So a nearly 2,000 gold lead puts Top Esports ahead, plus the two Drakes. Heavily favored so far in this one. SOFM wants to steal. He's going to get it. Nice pickup with the Smite. Gets to get something done. Asuning still needs to find a way to use this Wukong to win the game. They've got three plates topside, going for a bit more here. Plate number four going to be shared with SOFM, and they can knock the rest of this one down. They got 30 seconds to grab this next plate. Should be able to do so. 369 just forced to play in the backside. He went early ninja tabby. He's just playing defense, and he isn't bleeding too badly, but Jaculo's being moved around the map. He's in the mid lane, gets plate number two down there. Top Esports off to a great start. Yeah, wherever Jackie Love goes, you have to respect the TES presence. But Suning have some advantages of their own. The possibilities here, you know, Trinity to Force built up by Bin. Uh, the Wukong greatly accelerated. And you definitely have the possibility for some large Wombo combos um, with both AD carry and supports rotating towards mid. Sword Art with Flash available on Rakan. You can lock two members up in time for a Wukong ultimate and try and have uh, one of those devastating combinations. Other than that, though, they have to worry about the presence from Jackie Love, uh, continuing to threaten around mid. Well, two turret plates plus first blood difference, first turret difference, I should say, can amount to about 450 gold. So not gigantic, but still obviously a meaningful difference here as the gold lead sits at still about 1,100. Knight gonna get hit. He's, he's not gonna chase him. That would not be worth it. But you can see with SFM putting in the pressure, he gets to contest the ward. Bot lane is being pushed in right now by Angel. And mid's kind of too hard to do anything with right now. Uh, they know SFM's kind of around. They know that the Wukong could maybe move. And so no turret pressure really being done in the mid lane. And Suning actually weathering the storm. I mean, the gold has flattened out somewhat in the last couple minutes. Yeah, I think the main thing they're worried about is are the neutral objectives. Uh, you know, this is both Rift Heralds that have gone over to top esports. It is both dragons for this early game. Karsa continues his similar play style. Okay, ganks for the lane and focus on the neutral objectives, getting TES to a very comfortable mid game here. Again, though, it is all up to Suning to find this flank, that combination of the Rukong, uh, the Rakan and the Wukong. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Is the, uh, is the power that they do have that they can bring here. Easy shot comes through, second turret goes down, so Top Esports add 500 more gold to the coffers, and suddenly the play space opens up quite a bit, as there's a lot of jungle you can now own towards the bottom side, right? If, if you're trying to stack dragons and realistically feel like they can do so, getting rid of those two turrets makes it the easiest to make that happen. Now a play in the mid lane, flashes, they're gonna find some kicks, but I think they layered it incorrectly. Jackie Love gets out because the kick was too early and Sword Art knocked him up afterwards. Yeah, it's you're gonna have to decide which one you're gonna blame for that because it once you do a kick, the kick actually animation will, or the uh, the trajectory that he's gonna go, if you have another knockup, that stops the movement. So it was an instant kick into the W from Sword Art, and Sword Art's knockup makes, means there will be no movement backwards, actually saving Jackie Love's life here. So if we slow this down, there's some mechanics to look after. Gets the, the kick right there, right before the knockup, it looked like. And uh, if he's not gonna get that distance traveled backwards, yeah. he gets the walk out. I'm going to blame the jungler here. Flash. Um, as a non-jungler, Sword Art's <laughs> play is, is the very, very standard Rakan play. It's yeah. ult, run in, flash W. And as Lee Sin, you have played around that so many times. SOFM just jumped the gun a little bit too early. It sucks to make the kind of mistake, but look, this is the case here. For seven of the 10 players on either roster, it is their first major international land tournament. They've all got 11 games of experience. This is game number 12. Yeah, if you if you take out the Flash Wolves players and Jackie Love, yeah. then all the players in this entire game, uh, this Worlds is their first international games. I would say also, counterpoint, that is the standard Lee Sin play there. Yeah. For the knockback. Here's Angel, though. He's got one a One on tonight, trying to run away. Got the shield, looks for more. Shockwave on a one. Other one gets stopwatch. Here comes the re-engage, though, with Karsus there for the dunk, and they're going to find the kill. Knight says, that's what you get for replacing me with Angel. I'm the better mid laner, and out they go. Looks like that's going to be the end of that conversation, too. SOFM down, and it's going to be an easy reset here for uh, Yuyan Jia. Right back, to the, right back to the base, he's going to come out with his ultimate ready off of this reset. Dragon is available, no jungler for Sooning. Guess what, Freak? That's a soul point. Yeah, it's going to be the Drake dropping before 18 minutes into the game. At least the next will live a bit longer, but 
Top Esports in complete control. 700 gold lead plus three drakes. Means you can kind of roughly double that in your mind. I feel like that's that's kind of about the worth of a dragon in terms of expected win rate. But we still need to see Sooning get more done than top side ganks this game, or this will just run away from them. Yep, the bottom side definitely was a tragedy for Sooning, looking back at how we got to this point. Here's another look at this play, though. And again, this play, the mechanics of it are, are fairly interesting, where you get the shockwave in. But really, the important part is that they kill the jungler. And this is right before the soul point dragon comes up. So the target there and the focus from top esports, focusing down the jungler in this skirmish on bottom side, making sure that they get the kill that matters for their game plan yeah. right on timing means ever everything. It makes it look so effortless in the aftermath then because you're like, oh, hey, what do you know? We're in this scenario. The jungler's dead and the dragon's up. Perfect. Yep. But it's just really good coordination here from top esports that gets them to that point. And you can see now pressure on the bottom side. They will look for their third kill here sooning and it will once again be on Jace. Here comes the chase down. Easy kick into the wall if they want it. They're going to go in for the play. A couple of knockups come through. Knockup comes down for Sword Art and Kill comes in number two for Ben. The Trinity Force Wukong is going to try to be the biggest carry in this game because they don't have a lot else going for him. And Sooning tries to get back from a gold deficit with a single game exception. A 15 minute gold or deficit signal they win or lost for Sooning. They had a single comeback from a deficit. Otherwise, 15 minutes told them exactly what the game was going to be for the rest of it. And actually, for this too, the location of this attempt from Sooning is calculated. You see in the red side jungle of top esports, three wards placed down. It's repeat attempts from Sooning to try and find a pick on the bottom side of the map in preparation for this soul dragon. When you get that bottom side turret down, you have deep wards in this red side jungle. This could be that teleport flank from Wukong, that combination with the Rakan lockup that Sooning are praying for at this point, because that is all that's going to get them back in this game. So as mid is pushed in, Bin continues to grab a lot of the farm. You can see he's still getting the least of all of his, you know, various carry lanes. 180, you can see 214, 195, but still going to be obviously quite relevant. Team out done for a while. Triforce death stance is soon. You're going to fight for the wards, going to get those no problem. So we're going to fight back and we'll soon see interactions. We know Mountain Soul is in two minutes and 20 seconds and that will nearly spell the game. Bin's going to get out. Smite goes onto the clone and Karsa not going to get into range easily enough. Not going to burn much. Of course, doesn't have flash, so walks away. And Sunni committing to the split push there. They have uh, Angel holding the teleport on top side. He pushes the entire wave in. They uh, have confidence in Bin to just escape that attempt. And they want to save all of these possible cooldowns of their teleports for the setup for this dragon. But again, top esports, they're really good at doing their homework, doing their setup for these objectives. You see, they instantly sweeped out all the vision that Sunni were able to lay down in preparation for this incredibly important fight. And that allows them to have the setup of their own, where again, the Jackie Love plus uh, Pantheon point and click and then follow up CC allows for these pick opportunities. Ben gonna be the point of pressure. You can see jungle and support coming to join him. It's SOFM and Sword Art. Try to make sure that Ben is safe to knock this one in, push down the wave, get the gold, and maybe even threaten 369. You can see the Pantheon and the set coming over as well. So the same two roles coming to match, in fact, the map is pretty equally mirrored here. Azir and Orianna are going to face off top side as well. Again, we know Mountain Soul is in one minute. Both of those players have teleport available, and Sword Art will very easily get away with the Blast Plan if he needs to, but he can wait for now, get another ward down. That's pretty smart. And again, for Sooning, this Bin versus 369 matchup is incredibly important. The Wukong now completing Death Dance is, is such a big component. They want to try and get the split push on the side going, push the wave to allow Bin more angles to try and come at this fight for. Trinity Force plus Death Dance for Wukong. He is ready for this 22 minute uh, dragon fight that's about to erupt. That's their hope. It's between these new LPL top laners yeah. that are fighting to become the biggest carry. And red side should be the more dominant one, should be the one with the counter pick, which they were able to use. They found the jungle pressure up there. They set him up. Easy kill. Well done, Jace. Has his own Umbral Glaive to play for ward control. Ben wants to sneak in, gets the wave down, but here comes an engage to the bottom side, looking maybe at cars, but he's a tank. Not an easy target, but they get him to half, which is not bad so far. 
between Lee Sin Kicks and Shrima Shuffles. They've got a chance at pushing the enemy jungler away. Sun Ning need to claim this Drake or it's almost always game over. Top Esports staying together as five. Sun Ning playing a bit more split up. Sword are not going to hit with the Shock Blast though. And will there even be an engage? They're almost late to the party. Kars is still only at 1200 health. Gets a shield from Orianna, still waiting around for the play. Is there a room in for Top Esports? Waiting for Carson to go in. 1k health is going to be claimed by SOFM. And Carson down to 800. In comes Vin for the knockup. Doug puts him away. Looks for the re-engage on the back line. They've shut down Jackie Love. Vin doing the heavy lifting. Can he do the rest? He puts the team into it. Knight flashes the way to the wrong side of the map. And a shockwave is not going to do it. Su Ning mouth the comeback. Soon and can they go, go go over to Baron, push the wave and get right over there? They do get the dragon. They can get the Baron as well, Freak, just in time. Sooning can pull this back. Kars is still alive. Four top esports though, and they're looking to contest. Sooning's only had one comeback win so far at Worlds 2020. Looking at the second so far, they've brought the game back equal. They're still staring down the threat of a mountain soul, but this Baron. It's gonna happen. The jungler's nowhere nearby. Kars doesn't have a, does not have a real smite. Baron will be claimed and Sooning will reclaim the gold lead. Your past does not have to determine your future, Freak. Sooning fighting back. Now with the gold lead, now with the Baron. They will not be the victims of another 3-0. See if they can pull it off. That flank from Bin and Sword Art that we've been talking about the whole game trying to look for Sooning, they finally find it. Bin goes in, he finds extra kill deep, then they get the section off on night two. Nowhere for night to go. Flashes and dies as well. These are big cooldowns, big wins for Sooning, and you see the reaction yeah. from the coaching staff. Yeah, the underdog run definitely still alive. Sooning looking for a bit more here as well. Bin got into the back line, and no one peeled. Shockwave came out later. The rest of his team not that great at it overall. So now what can happen to this Red Bull Baron? How much can Sooning get? The 1600 gold is basically what you get for Baron just itself. They need to get more than this for the Baron to mean anything at all. Bot lane being pushed in. A couple of reinforcements are here, but it's 4v2 on the bottom side of the map. It's the other parts that are actually being attacked here. Wan Fung and SWFM going to knock down this mid lane turret. 500 gold going to be claimed, no problem. Top Esports knows better than to try, but the outer turrets are easy. The more difficult part is mid tier 2 as they dunk right into it, and instantly Wan Fung is gone. Karsa makes the huge play in the mid game. All right, TES now with a power play, and it is up to Sooning to release the pressure. They cannot get more than that single mid turret with the Baron buff. This is actually a very measly Baron power play on the side of Sooning, considering how much standing gold was still on the map. Really big play here from Karsa to cut off the push from Sooning. One fucking actually gone for the more defensive option too, going Iceborne Gauntlet against four AD. Yeah, like, he took right. cleanse. Exactly. I'll stack the armor, but you, you're not gonna survive the uh, Karsa dunk unless you got Quicksilver Sash. And he's gonna finish Death Dance first. We'll see what comes out next. But that Baron power play, yeah, it's just that fourteen hundred sixty, right? That's that's just Baron itself. That's nothing special. So top esports, yes, they'll have to come back from a gold deficit, but in two minutes, that next Drake spawns, and if Karsa lands that smite, it's a really, really good chance to win that game overall. That's the big issue with giving up so many early dragons. Every five minutes, you're faced with this heart-pumping decision. Oh, well, Sword has got a heart-pumping decision of his own. Does uh, have the extra mobility of Rakan, so not too bad. All right, no problem right now. So, once again, just wait around for crossing the T's out of the eyes. As you mentioned it, Kobe, doing your homework, making sure you are set up. Nice little recall stop there. No kills, no problem. But mid lane is under fire. The last 15 seconds of Baron buff is ultimately not going to mean too much. Yun Jiao has to lose his recall again. Sword Art trying to be the most annoying player in this game, and it's worked out pretty decently for him. I also have to say, level 16 now on Bin, the extra experience here for Wukong down in the side lane, you see him split pushing there, is really big. That level, uh, extra level into your ultimate for uh, Wukong with the Conqueror, with the full build here basically, and a stopwatch. Bin is a guy, this is a rookie for Sooning. Yeah. Joined this year, and they have just done everything to set him up for success. And it has really paid off for them. He's already had some huge plays here at Worlds. The Gangplank Barrel uh, heard around Europe uh, to be able to get them that victory over G2. See if he can have a similar impact in this series. Karsa, though, he's got the flank. 
Cars is going to look for one flank yet again, finds a single stun, and it's not going to be a team kill. He's not going to knock down his old teammate, so Rodart gets away. No dunk used. Going to save that cooldown for the all-important Drake fight. And SOFM, he's so sad. There was a ward right there. Knight saw him. He's like, I'm going to play back. You're not going to get the kick on me. I will stay alive for this Drake fight. And once again, it is a battle that Sooning must at least get the smite in. And that's it. They've got extra resources uh -oh. to send. Sword Art, it's been rooted. It's been dunked. It's going to be a kill. No, it's not. He ults. He gets away. Just back to his teammate. And that is some important cooldowns missing. Sword Art, of course, burned his own ulti. But it's still going to be a 5v5 in the bottom river. Drake is alive. Pretty big setup here. Uh, TS trying to find their way just to even let Karsa get a smite fight. Because the rewards are tremendous for TS if they win the smite fight. And the losses aren't that big. One single Mountain Drake going over wouldn't be the end of the world. They're trying to force it now. It's going to be a battle. Who's going to get the kick? Who's going to make the smite come through? The battle comes in again. It goes to SOFM with the seal. The re-engage with the double shockwave is good. And Jackie Love finds the kill in a sword art. Jackie Love looking to attack. He's going to go down to bin yet again. Angel gets the double scoop. Burns his Zonius, but the re-engage looking pretty good. The front line is squishy. Uyun Jack goes down. Knight is on the run. He just cannot survive. And SOFM goes in for more. A double kill for bin And 3-6-9. It's a three this game. He's going to kill a minion wave. He is going to die. It's going to be a... <laughs> Okay, swags for his old team, and that's gonna be a huge pickup in Ace for Suning. SOFM spent so much time in the LNG jail, and he's back. He's on the world stage now, and he is winning it. Suning with another big dragon fight, and they're gonna take it right through to the Nexus. You have to believe they closed this game out. The first Nexus turret gonna drop, and the respawn's gonna take a little bit too long. The stopwatch drops aggro. The second one falls, and now it's the time for the desperation defense. They're gonna try two versus four. Already a kill comes through. Another one comes in, but the Nexus will fall, and Suning takes the upset win in game one. Underdogs rise up, freak. Yeah. 3 0 in the semifinals of the LPL, but Sooning will not let it go down like that here on the world's stage. These guys coming together, so big for them. What a year it has been, too, from 11th place in spring in the LPL here to one game up in the world semifinals. One and seven on the year coming into the series. One and oh in the series itself. It doesn't matter what happened before. What, what matters is how you play on the day. The battle for who will represent the LPL for the three-peat in the finals. And it's one of the soonings so far. Beautifully done. Now, episode one of Untold Stories, Top Moments from Worlds is out now. Here are the humble beginnings of Worlds episode one, titled Freak's Basement.